It is Hans Olsen, former BYU football great from Hans and Scotty, every day, noon to three Mountain on KSL Sports Zone. And he's, of course, BYU Radio's new football analyst. He's one game in, so uh, Hans, you qualify as just a wily veteran alongside Greg Revelle at this point, right? Yeah, oh yeah, deep in it, for sure. <laughs> and as you can see, I raided your closet, Spencer. Hey, it's looking I like good. Medium. <laughs> yeah, your, your mediums fit me just right. And by the way, I got a bone to—I got a bone to pick with your producer. Uh oh. He—he he saw this helmet and he said, "Oh, that's a nice old tiny helmet." He <laughs> called it an old tiny helmet. I'm like, that's the one I played in, man. Like, what do you mean old tiny? Didn't Boney Fuller play in that one? <laughs> <laughs> he used the words. Old tiny. I love it's, it. He just graduated, oh, so 20 years ago feels like a long time. Okay, <laughs> it's not. It's not like you and I and Spence. You know, <laughs> we, we watched you and we're like, hey, this is the heyday. You know, it's all good. Former teammate of Virgil Carter, Hans Olsen, <laughs> with us on BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Phantom was an amazing running back, was he not, Hans? <laughs> uh, Hans, in the spirit of old timey football. And uh, BYU bouncing back like they did. They pushed forward out of the 60s and 70s into greatness in the 80s. What's it going to take for this team within the context of this season to put what's in the past in the past on offense and bounce back to have a good performance against Southern Utah? First and foremost, just get your sets right. That's all you got to do. Just get lined up. You know, that's the most important thing at this point is get your alignment right and when you're without Keanu Hill and you're without Cody Epps and you're trying to navigate kind of a new receiving core, lineups are going to be difficult. When you're getting new re running backs involved in the game, lineups are going to be difficult at times. And you saw that Keaton Slovis was trying to direct traffic with the running backs. And, you know, you've got calls at the line that receivers have to see and they've got to be able to rotate and get into those alignments. Here's the thing, guys. It's a lot like broadcasting. If if it's not ready up here, then you're busy trying to figure out the motions and you're not able to actually get through some of your thoughts because you're worried about too many other things. It's the same with football. If you're busy trying to figure out where you line up, then you don't think about your foot placement. You don't think about your route cuts. You don't think about the timing and it throws everything off. So just get set. It's something as simple as getting set. And now those receivers have some experience and they probably got chewed pretty good and they should be able to find their sets against Southern Utah. And then I'm hoping to see at least one of the two, if not both, but certainly one of the two between Keanu Hill and Cody Epps back against Southern Utah. At least that's my hope. Our question of the day is which BYU player will have the biggest bounce back game against Southern Utah. What do you think? I think it'll be Isaac Rex. Ooh. I, you know, I, I, it was really interesting watching Isaac Rex and the usage and the timing. It felt off between him and Keaton Slovis. And that's not the, that's not the word that was coming out of camp. It felt like he and Isaac were on the same page and it didn't really present. I want to see Isaac Rex used in some of those scene throws. I want to see Isaac used in the middle of the field. Um, and I, I want to see him show more confidence, and I want to see Keaton show more confidence in him. But I think it'll be Isaac Rex. On a scale of 1 to 10, Hans, after one game, where would you put your concern level for this BYU football offense overall? On a, on a so a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, 10 being that you need to blow the thing up yes. and move on. Yes. And, and one being 90, whatever, two Cowboys. Exactly right. Um, <laughs> nice. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with a good three and a half to four. Okay. Not that high. No, it's not that high at all. There's things I'm looking for. You know, when you, when you're playing with a transfer quarterback, that's been at a few schools, you watch him close and you see if he can pick up the things that Aaron Roderick is trying to explain to him. So I've got my eye on Keaton Slovis. I, I want to see him start to really pick things up the timing, get rid of the ball, move it out of the pocket a little quicker. 
and and find those targets a little bit more accurately. I, I know that there were some accurate passes, but there were some things that were just off a touch. There was a screen pass that was behind the screener, and um, I think there was a pass out to the flats that threw to the outside that turned the receiver around. Just hit those spots a little bit more. I want to see, obviously, I want to see the running backs really start to form. I want to see Aiden Robbins do better. Yeah. But I just don't have a ton of concern. Uh, let me tell you why I don't have a ton of concern, and I'll make this quick. Aaron Roderick and Fessy Sataki have put up numbers. They have put two quarterbacks in the NFL. They've got receivers in the NFL. They've got running backs in the NFL. Their offense has not been an issue. And it always seems like Aaron Roderick, with his intelligence, combined with the voice of Fessy Sataki, and I'd even go Steve Clark, who's been a coordinator and understands the flow of an offense. Hmm. I've had zero issues with that offensive coaching staff. And when you've got a good offensive coaching staff, you've got hope. You got hope that those guys are going to be in formation, in alignment, that they're going to know their job and that they're going to get their job done. So it's very, very low concern at this point. With that said, there is pressure for the offense to perform this week um, what, and put up some points. What does that perhaps need to look like in your opinion? That's got to be 38 points with – eight to 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Oh, okay. And hopefully the defense does their same, they do their same song and dance, keep them, you know, zero to seven, somewhere in there, and put up 38 points with eight to 10 minutes left in the fourth. So I can see a little bit of Rhett's laugh. So I can see a little bit more of Smith. So I can see a little bit more of Kingston. I want to be able to see a number of guys get offensive sets with eight to 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. So 38 to three with eight to 10 minutes. And I'm happy if that second and third unit can put up a field goal or a touchdown and push it into that 42 to 45 range, then I'm really happy. But yeah, 38 points. I, I want to see. Arena Football League legend Hans Olsen with the Sun BYU Sports <laughs> Nation. I'm just going to think of all the most obscure things I can do to introduce you, Hans. Hey, <laughs> hey Colton, here's another old timey helmet. You talk lanes, baby. There's, there's another old timey helmet for you, bud. I love it. I love old-timey. it. Old timey. Hey, Hans, you, you can speak to this very specifically. Earlier this week, Trevor Maddich of ESPN did not hold back on the BYU offensive line. And he straight out called them out and said they're playing in a way that makes defenses excited to play against them. They, they're, they are not playing with fire and physicality. How did you see BYU's offensive line in their performance against Sam Houston? Do, do they need the stark wake-up call like Trevor Maddich is suggesting? I, I thought he was a little more harsh than probably needs to be. But that's fine because I think Trevor comes from a world of very high level offensive line play. Um, he was a better offensive lineman than I was. And and so I think that he demands and expects the world because he knows the talent that's there at BYU. I, I went back, I actually re I went back and rewatched the game and I regraded the offensive line the way I would grade it. Um, and I felt like Connor Pegg graded okay. I think he could do better on twist handoffs, better on backside wall offs, but I thought he was okay. I thought Paul Miley, outside of one pressure on a three man rush, that really upset me. I thought he was pretty good. Uh, I thought Waylon Lapuaho was okay, other than the big penalty, was okay. Uh, Kingsley Solmataea needs to probably take that step. It's not that his game was bad. And let me be really clear on this, guys. There were plays where Kingsley took his guy and put him so far in the dirt that the kid's parents are probably still looking for him. Like, it, <laughs> he had moments of pure dominance. So don't get this confused. It's just the hype was so big, and I think people expected so much, and he maybe wasn't to that level. Um, I thought that time's rotations could definitely improve, and I thought Caleb Etienne's 
time could improve. So I go through a five-man format because it's always tough. It, okay, for instance, Spencer, let's say you have an incredible show, and Jeremy's like, just trying to get this done. This or is most days. Vice versa. Okay. And somebody sends a tweet and says, oh, my gosh, Sports Nation was awful today. And Jeremy, you're sitting there like, what? Spencer was awful. What are you talking about? Like, I, no. I was good. You know, or or Colton in the production thinking that's an old-timey helmet. That was awful. No. It, I, you know, it's tough when you're a part of a position group and you all get lumped in. It sucks. And I kind of felt like Trevor's comments were all involving, and that's fine, and they could definitely do better. Believe me, they could do better. But there were good performances inside that game from individuals in moments that make me believe they got it. They just need to do it every play. And, and I saw glimpses of things that I really liked from them. First two games certainly are a nice warm-up to get to 10 straight Power 5s for BYU. They haven't opened up a home with two straight like this since 2012. When you look at what BYU did against Sam Houston, what they hope to do against Southern Utah, what do you want to see Saturday that gets you feeling like, okay, hey, BYU can go to Arkansas and compete with the Razorbacks next week? Another, another good defensive performance. Being able to really close out those, those edges. That was one of my, that was one of the biggest improvements I saw from this BYU defense was their ability to set and close an edge. It is an underrated aspect of any level of football to have defensive ends that can set an edge that have a safety or an outside linebacker or corners that can truly set an edge. And they showed against Sam Houston they could set the edge. Guys, against Arkansas and Kansas with the quarterback running back duos that they have, you're going to have to be able to shut those edges down. And Blake Mangelson, I saw his son, phenomenal, awesome. Keep pounding that edge. Tyler Batty, you look better. Mm. Uh, Isaiah Banya, you looked really good setting the edge. And you know what I liked, guys? I saw. Uh, four or five guys that you didn't really know their names coming into this season, coming up and setting the edge, including the two transfers that they brought from Weber State at the corner position. They did a good job of setting that edge. So I need to see them continue to pound that contain and force SUU back inside and be able to really control that that offensive usage on the outside. It, this is specifically to being able to be able to take on Arkansas. And it was so much better. And I want to see it be really good against Southern Utah again. Because those were the areas where last season and maybe even the last three seasons, that's how I lost my hair. I'm not even kidding, guys. Before, but like going back three years ago, I had a big old full bushy head of hair. I remember. And then... And then I'm watching BYU's inability to truly hold and press contain, and it's just killing me. As a former defensive end, I played DN my sophomore year at BYU. I just understand how, yeah, with, with what's his name, 40? Evan, was it, what's the guy? Oh, Eldon Forti. Yeah, Eldon Forti. Yeah, yeah. Eldon Forti. Yeah. 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 You get but it. I was playing defensive end with Eldon Forti. And, uh, and so I'm holding that edge, and and I understand the importance, and I understand the importance of the support of linebackers that scrape, yeah, corners that come and press on receivers, and outside linebackers that can that can press and contain on the outside. Continue to show me that, and I think that you can play with Arkansas. I'm just not real worried about this offense, guys. It's it's going to come around, and and if it doesn't quickly with Keaton Slovis. I trust Aaron Roderick enough to know that he'll make the adjustments he needs to make. Hans, great stuff. Uh, we always appreciate your time, know how busy you are. For what it's worth, as an old-timer, you look amazing in that medium polo, my friend. <laughs> yeah, you and Phil Mixon. <laughs> Last time I ever 
raid your closet. I'm telling you. <laughs> you, you wear a small shirt, man. I, it, it, I, it looks like I raided Chef's closet. Yeah, like, not a small shirt, but yes. <laughs> yeah, he's wearing an extra small. So. Oh, great stuff. Hans, we appreciate your brother. Looking forward to your call tomorrow again in game number two. We'll talk to you again soon. See you tomorrow. Love you both. Great job.